Okay, we will start this session with the keynote speaker, uh, Mr. Mansour Dawfir, with the uh, blockchain. Uh, so good. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I first of all thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to come here and speak here. Uh, my name is Mansour Tawafi, I am from London, and I am here to speak about the applications and the practical use of a very innovative and inventive technology in the 21st century called the blockchain. Uh, I don't know how many people know about the blockchain, but today will not be a detailed insight into it, but it will be something that is just to a basic level and to expose to you some of the best uses that the blockchain can give to today's society and allow economies around the world, especially from underprivileged economies with regards to banking and finance, to benefit to a level that has never been possible before. So we will get started. And the first thing that we will speak about is the history of what, something that all of you are familiar with, and this is called the internet. So since the internet came out, we have seen a lot of applications, we have seen a lot of uses, a lot of benefits for humanity in more than one way. And the internet right now is the internet of information. So that means when I send an email to you, it goes from my account to your account, but it's just a copy of this information. It is not the actual source itself. So uh, I can send an email, but a copy will be retained with me as well. And the same is uh, to do with websites, and we have seen so many practical, phenomenal uses that have benefited mankind to a great degree. One of the best examples of internet is Facebook. Is there anybody in this room who does not have a Facebook account? Okay, so everyone has Facebook, yes? Fantastic. Now, Facebook is uh, one of the best examples of the internet and how it has connected the whole world, whereas that was never possible before. Right? And the internet has done phenomenal things, but now we want to take it one step further than the internet. If you think that the internet has done some phenomenal stuff in the world, then you will be amazed by what the blockchain can do. So let's speak about uh, how right now, specifically in the finance sector, the system works. The way it works right now, if I want to send money from my account to somebody else's account, I have to go through a bank or a financial institution. And the reason for that is because they have to record, verify and authorize that transaction. And the main reason that that system is in place is because of trust. For me to send something to someone else, I need there to be someone in between that I can trust so I feel safe sending that information. Does that make sense? Because for me to just send money anywhere without a regulatory body in place is very dangerous. But because of this system today, I'm sure you all agree with me that the financial institutions are to a certain extent exploiting the common people. They are taxing the poor and benefiting the rich. And it is not something that is fair to everybody. And we see this around the world where we see some of the best countries in the world who have the best banking system available, their economies are the best, and then the other countries, because their banking system isn't as privileged, they cannot, they cannot prosper. And this is, in one way, oppression of societies. Because the rich keep getting richer, the poor keep getting poorer, and it becomes a, a huge problem. So we are here to rethink the financial services industry. How can we add more value to the financial services industry and how can we now reshape it? Because since the 1900s we have seen cars evolve, we have seen mobile phones come, we have seen letters turn to email, we have seen satellite dishes, we have seen every single industry advance, but in my opinion, Two of the most important industries in the world have not changed whatsoever. The first one is the education industry, classrooms are the exact same way. And the second one is the financial industry. And the financial industry is the first one that's about to undergo a major change. So if today you go to any major financial institution in the world, they are unanimously agreeing that the only future for finance is digital currency is a digital form of money because the fiat currencies of today with the inflation 
and the lack of backup, and, and the overproduction of money, and quantitative easing. With all of this, it is causing huge problems, and we saw one example of this in the 2008 recession, and experts are now predicting another recession to take place within the next couple of years, which could be much more fatal. So, we need a solution. We need something new to come out, but how is that possible? Because through the internet, if I was to transfer money from my account to your account, it would not make sense for me to keep a copy of that money. So the internet is not a practical solution because when I send information through the internet, it's just a copy of the information. It's not the actual information itself. But what then can be a solution? The solution can be an internet of value. And this is something that if you truly understand this, it can really reshape your whole ideology about how the future of finance will look. The internet of value will speak about not just information being sent from one person to another or one account to another, but intellectual property, money, identity, energy, art, votes, financial services, right? And all of this can only be done when you have a system that is much more secure because the internet will not hack that. So that system, right, and if we look at the history, before I introduce that system to you, if we look at the history of the world, there have been some advances. I'm not going to go into the complete detail of barter and, and gold and everything, but initially there was informal rules. And informal rules, uh, you know, these were systems where people, this is almost like etiquette, where people just knew what was going to happen. But again, a global system cannot be based just on unwritten rules. Then after that, we have the formal institutions, I think it's a little bit too dark, but it says bank. And the formal institutions, just like the banks, just like the government-controlled uh, institutions, they were trusted by the people because we had guarantees and society had to be kept up, but they weren't, uh, they weren't fair, and they still are not fair, right? And, and we already covered that point. So the online institutions is the most recent that we have seen. So what is the practical application? The application that we are speaking about is cryptocurrency and the blockchain, right? What is the blockchain about? Now, the blockchain is something that can help us in all areas of life. But for the purpose of this presentation, I will focus just a little bit more on just the financial side of the blockchain. So the blockchain, the way it works is this is an online ledger which is very, very secure. It's secured by the highest level of cryptography. The information transferred on this ledger, you can exchange ownership of this information. And the way it works is that from the time when the first block gets created, the people within the system, the miners as they call it in the blockchain system, they solve extremely complex mathematical algorithms and in return for that, they get rewarded a new set of blocks. But the idea is that every single block is connected to each other. So, to keep it very simple, for you to hack or to mess around with one of these blocks, you would have to hack all the blocks in the blockchain. And the reason why it's so secure is because the blocks in the blockchain are not in one place. They are connected with millions and billions of computers around the world, which all at the same time will have to be hacked in, which practically is impossible today. So that means that because it is a system where we depend on humans around the world, many, many, not just one bank, not just one institution, but many, many individuals around the world which authorize and verify and confirm transactions, there can be almost nothing done wrong in this system. And to give you a better understanding, we call this, or this is by Don Tapscott, he calls this the trust protocol. When so many servers at the same time are linked with each other, and they all are connected and they all secure the system, it allows us to transact and to use money and assets without the need for banks or financial institutions. Now this has put a lot of people in Wall Street and in the finance world in a little bit of agony, but now even they, they're saying instead of battling it, we might as well join them and they're all getting into the blockchain industry. So what this really means for us, if what I just said did not make sense to you whatsoever, what this really means for us is that we are looking at a new financial system in the near coming future. 
And this is a reality. This is happening. Most of the major banks in the world have already invested in this technology, have already tried to change it to this technology. But today, I'm going to take it one step further. I'm also going to introduce you to one of the best forms of the cryptocurrency world. So, the story of cryptocurrency is very simple. In 2008, the global financial crisis happened, and I'm sure everyone uh, heard about that, or some people were affected with that. In 2009, the first blockchain technology called Bitcoin was released in the market. Now, Bitcoin, for those of you who have heard of it, I'm sure it's not a very positive site, because it's connected with the dark web and Silk Road and a lot of illegal activities, but that is just one cryptocurrency. We are here to speak about the 2016, the most recent technologies of this system. And, as I said before, the difference is in traditional way of transfer that people are connected through one central body, whereas in the blockchain system, it's peer-to-peer. -peer. Everyone is connected with each other. And of course, that makes it much, much more secure. And the, the, the blockchain is actually just an online ledger. It means it just records the transactions and it uh, exchanges uh, ownership. And the integrity and the chronological order of the blockchain is encoded with cryptography. So this is not something that can be changed. It's a very safe mathematical system, right? You cannot, you cannot bend mathematical rules. So now, we are, uh, or I am here, and I'm also representing one of the, uh, in fact today, the biggest cryptocurrency in the world, uh, according to our market capture and the number of users, and that is called the OneCoin. So what are some practical uses, uses of the cryptocurrency? What can we do with this? For example, we, can, we are educating the people, we have an exchange, and you can, you can see around here there's a lot of stuff. There's fund transfers, there's uh, you know, uh, stuff like trending and investing, and all of this. But when we speak about the OneCoin ecosystem, what we are uh, uh, addressing is a solution to three of the biggest problems in the world. Three of the biggest problems in the world. And these are, number one, banking the unbanked. I don't know about the numbers here in Kurdistan, but there is a lot of people in the Middle East, in Africa, in Asia, and in Latin America who don't have access to banking whatsoever. With the cryptocurrency that we are developing, we can give them banking and allow them to use it the same way as the rich people do. Secondly, we can cut out remittances. Uh, just so I know, is there anybody in this room who, on a regular basis, transfers money to a different country? Okay, so we have a gentleman there. And is it possible for you to do that free of charge? It depends on the bank or the country. Yeah, okay. But most of the time when you exchange currency, you get charged a little bit, yes? And this is a reality wherever you are in the world. Remittances, yes. Yeah, exactly. With cryptocurrency, and we'll speak about this later, we can completely eradicate remittances or at least decrease it by 80%. So for businesses and of course people who transfer money abroad, it's a huge, huge advantage. Okay? Now there's a very quick video I would like to play regarding the blockchain of OneCoin and you'll understand some of the applications. Yes. Does it work? The video is there.
So just to cover a little bit about what the video was going to say, the first thing that we have done, and for those of you who know Bitcoin, the biggest problem with Bitcoin is that it's anonymous. Now we can solve the global system, but not with a coin that nobody knows who is using it, because that poses a very great security threat. With one coin, we are the first blockchain that actually have implemented KYC. Anybody knows what KYC means? Okay, it was on the video. Great. Know your customer. And that means that when I open a bank account, I have to provide them my passport and proof of address so they know I'm a real person. So this is the biggest development in the cryptocurrency world so far. Not just that. And here is, and here is something that to the business owners in this room will really make a lot of sense. We can process transactions. We can process more transactions in one month than Visa and MasterCard combined can process in a whole year. That means we are the fastest payment processing system in the world. And it has never been better than this. And not just that, it is very safe and future proof. So that means all the transactions are recorded and stored so that nobody later on can forge or fake the transactions. So these are some really, really practical examples <coughs> and allow us to understand the benefits of it. So once again, the remittances, Western Union charging people up to 27% for sending money internationally. The remittance industry in 2016 alone was $23 trillion. Trillion dollars. And we can cut that down to a very bare minimum with cryptocurrency if they were to use this. And this is the last slide. The last slide is banking the unbanked, which means uh, a poor person in Africa can now just bank their money and utilize their money just through a mobile phone or a receiver and they can send me money directly in UK, or they can send me their vegetables, I can send them directly money without anyone in between. And if you look in the world, the places where banking is diminished is most of the places where the crime is the highest. So there's a direct correlation between lack of banking and crime. So we can effectively reduce crime in the world as well. So the vision for us is really, really big that summarizes my presentation. I thank all of you for listening, and if you, have, if you do have any questions, you can find me here after. Thank you, if there's any questions. Okay, before I answer your question, when you say the hackers can stay in the systems, do you mean the blockchain system or they can hack the accounts? Really, I, I talk about transactions, meaning the operation related. Okay, so th that's a very good question. And the first thing I would like to address is that we, uh, we don't claim that we can do transactions between banks and individuals. That is not our purpose. Our purpose, actually, we, we have nothing against banks, but we, don't, we want to bypass the banking system with, that, with this system, okay? So it's not about banks, it's about individual to individual or business to individual or business to business. Okay? Meaning e-commerce? Yes, absolutely. Now to answer your very valid question, what is the digital signature here? Yeah. The digital signature here is much more secure and much more authentic than any system in the world. Why? Because these are, when the moment you go on the blockchain and you want to do a transaction, you have to prove your identity. 
So your identity is stored as part of the blockchain, which cannot be changed. So just like today, we have digital signatures. When you go on websites and they save your passwords, and some websites, they save your, your, your uh, username and whatever. Here, not just your password. Here, every single detail about you can be saved on the blockchain. Okay, if you say that, what about the big data? You have big, a huge data in this world. Absolutely. And that's why the blockchain has huge mining centers and huge facilities where we store all this information. Now, the storage of information is becoming more and more advanced, and we can go into that with quantum computers and all of that. But when we speak about the transaction, uh, this is the most secure system. Because the moment I transact something to you, the ledger is already recording that, and everyone in the world can see that. The moment I want to hack that, I would have to hack all the computers around the world simultaneously which is impossible. So that's why the transaction, it is very safe. And the moment I send that to you, the, uh, every coin, every crypto coin, has its own identity, has its own DNA. In the world, you have, you have that indication. Yeah, absolutely. You never referring to that. I was very limited with time. Yes, we have very, very strong authentication. Yes. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I have a small question uh, for me. As a user, how what is the difference between Western Union and your system? Because I know about Western Union, I am not specialized about information technology or security. I I want to know what is the difference between your system and Western Union. I will because answer. Western you. Union very famous in the world. Absolutely, Western Union is very very famous, uh, but Western Union, uh, in its very core essence, uh, with due respect to them, is a very big ripoff. Because if I send, 20 years ago, if I was to write a letter, I would have to send it through the post office. Now I send an email, it's sent within a minute. It's just digital information. When Western Union transfers money, or let's say a bank, we, Western Union is a small example, let's take a bank. When a bank transfers money from one account to another, money doesn't fly over. It's just a transfer of digits. So for them to charge me anything on that is actually unfair. So for us, I'll answer your question with an example of Richard Branson. Everybody knows who Richard Branson is. He's the founder of Virgin one of the biggest uh, corporations in the world. And Richard Branson, he bought a plane uh, a couple of years ago, I don't remember the exact year, and the bank couldn't transfer the money quick enough. He sent it through cryptocurrency, and he bought a $600 million plane, and he saved $6 million just in transaction fees. On one transaction. Why? Because cryptocurrency is cheap, fast, and effective. And there is no offline processes. When I send money through a bank or Western Union, Offline, there's a lot of people that are working. Here is just a system that works for you. So it's instant. Automation. It's automation, absolutely. And that's why it's much more efficient. So for you, it will be much cheaper, much more beneficial, and the money will reach within a second. You don't have to wait. But when I can find this, where is that site? So we have a presentation on this in the Titanic Hotel at 2 p.m. today. So anyone who's interested, you're more than welcome to attend. Uh, another question? Sorry. The brother. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you very much for your uh, kind presentation. I really liked it and I enjoyed listening to you. Um, actually, I got many questions, but I'm going to ask you just one question today and I will leave the rest for tomorrow. I know that, that you're going to be somewhat more. Yes. <laughs> um, it's a very naive question, actually. What's going to happen uh, to that? real currency. I mean, is digital currency is going to replace the real currency or what's going to happen to that? Uh, that is a question that a lot of people have asked me. I have asked myself many times. And the best answer I could think of is this. The fiat currencies of today, their roots are too deep within the system for it to be affected by anything like this. The forex market, which is a very good representative of fiat currencies, trades $5.3 trillion every single day. All the cryptocurrencies combined over the last eight years, including OneCoin, including Bitcoin, including all of them, don't even add up to half a trillion in total. So it isn't even a drop in the water. But for the people that is our market, which is the poorest people in the world, which are the people who transfer money internationally, just like PayPal came and became a very big part of the system without affecting the other currencies, we believe will be a much more prominent part of the system and we can help much more people without posing a threat to the other currencies. Because you can never replace the dollar or the pound or the euro or any of the currencies just like that. So 
what the world they are going to be. Please one question on it because we haven't time. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Really, yeah. I'm very interested in this presentation. But today I have, okay. I have many questions. Okay, how will we how will you ensure that your system is secure? How can you prove to the world okay. that your system is secure? Do you understand my question? Yes, I do. From the point of the security side. How do you know that when you go to an ATM machine and you enter your card, your details will not be stolen? How do you know that when you send a message from WhatsApp to another person, your, the message will reach there safely? This system of digital security is called cryptography. Cryptography, and that's where encryption comes from. And for those of you who use WhatsApp, recently WhatsApp it encrypted all your files and it gave you a message. This means that nobody can access them because the unique key to accessing that information is only with you and the receiver. Just like that, the highest level of cryptography that's even used by organizations such as NASA is used within our company. And that is called script cryptography, S-C-R-Y-P-T. And that cryptography is more than enough to prove to us that it's secure. There is no system secure anymore. It is, it is secure today. Yeah. Maybe after one hour. I agree. Hour, yeah. Okay, we are not secure, my friend. And one of the big uh, challenges for the IoT in the future this is a security aspect. Yes. 100%. You cannot, you cannot be, make me believe that the system is system secure. Now it's secure. Maybe after one hour it's not secure. Yes. Okay. I completely agree with you. And can I adjust this? Okay. One minute. I completely agree with you regarding the security issue. In fact, Bitcoin accounts got hacked many times. And a lot of people lost a lot of their Bitcoins. But in the blockchain, the blockchain itself is not a software. That is an algorithm. It's a code. Okay, That is not hackable. The accounts can always be hacked. The good thing about us is that each code has its DNA. So we have a, a solution for this. When each code has its DNA, even if your account gets hacked, even if it gets transferred, we can always track who has done it, where it has been done, how it has been done, and you can always get it back. So this, the fairness in this, it's more fair than the banking system. So it's not perfect, but when in comparison to the systems of today, it is more secure, and that's a fact. In comparison. In comparison. Yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, my question is that is one coin is free? Is one coin what? Free. Free to what? To use it. To use it, yes, but to obtain it, of course not. And is it legal? It's very legal. In which countries? The regulation on cryptocurrency only exists in two countries in the world right now: Japan and America. We are regulated fully in both. In the rest of the uh, in Europe, for example, there is a uh, there's no regulatory body. But there is a list of uh, protocols that cryptocurrencies should be keeping to. We were adhering to those protocols before they were created. In fact, they were created based on the model that we use. So in the cryptocurrency world, the most legal and the only company that has an external audit report, the only cr the cryptocurrency that also has a monthly audit of its blockchain by Morrison International is us. So in terms of legality, there's no issues. What about the data center which is the transactions take a place? The mining centers? The data center where this all the transactions... The data center of the company, because we haven't launched yet, we're launching next year uh, in the public, but right now we're still a closed system, the data centers are for now not being released to anybody. But of course they exist and you can access the proof of that uh, on the website where you can see the activities of the blockchain happening and you can track it. No, what I mean, if it is legal then there, there must be a data center and this data center must be worked under the regulation of the country which is based on no no because we're speaking about a digital in, system in the uk where you can see barclays or not where these countries that are working these banks are working under the regulation of the country where it is based on so okay, whatever the data point. center is there must be a country where they have a regulation and they let this transaction in order to be secure? Um, no, because we are we are speaking about cryptocurrency. We are not speaking about a system that is uh, just restricted to one country. This is a global system. Whereas PayPal's data centers in UK doesn't exist. So PayPal only keeps their data centers in one place because they're an online system. There is no physical, tangible component to it. It, it is. It must be a physical data center in either the USA or in one of the European countries. Oh, of countries. course we have a physical data center, but it's not Where? in every single country we have. Where? The, the countries of them are known, 
such as well, this in Iceland, in Bulgaria, in Dubai. But the exact locations, of course, are not known right now because that would pose a great security threat to the company until it's fully uh, public in the market. But how the customer make sure that the passport IDs or all these transactions are secure? Because it's a blockchain. A blockchain is secure. It, okay, so this system, it's not something that you can say, oh, you know what, if I, say, if I have my passport and there is not secure. Because everything is transparent. You can go online and you can view all the information. When you go on the blockchain, and we will speak about this in the meeting in Titanic as well, so you're more than welcome to join. But in the blockchain, when the KYC is saved, you can see it. It's on there. It's, it's, it's on the file. But it's not something that you can say, you know what, I'm going to go and visit the data center to make sure. No, no, I don't mean visit the data center. The data center where it's based, it must be under the regulation of the country where they have all the data protection acts. Yes, of course, the data, yes, but that is relevant to the country. So in Bulgaria, in Dubai, in Iceland, we have all those regulations done. Okay. In the countries that we are in. <laughs> okay, uh, we finish this uh, and we go to the, our session to start our uh, articles. Thank, Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you.